we're going animal heavy in this deck and we're building around lockjaw and the monkey lockjaw allows you to cycle cards in and out presumably to get higher cost higher power cards and Hit Monkey also has this synergy with these lower cost cards that you want to be cycling through Lockjaw as well. So you can use him in tandem with Lockjaw or as an alternate game plan. Those lower cost cards include Wasp and Yellow Jacket and Mjolnir, which of course comes from Thor. Additionally, we've thrown in Mysterio, who helps discount both Mockingbird and Sasquatch. We have Jane Foster Thor to pull out all of our zero cost cards, including Molnir, Wasp, and Yellow Jacket if they remain in our deck. And we round out our big power cards with Vision, who if pulled out of Lockjaw can be moved away to play even more cards into the Lockjaw lane. And also Red Hulk and his grandson-in-law, Scar. Now that we've covered all the cards in this Lockjaw Hit Monkey deck, let's get to the games. Okay, first up we have Sharp. I have drawn into my top end. Attilan kind of stinks because you want to get cards out of your hand. So the best curve I have would be Mysterio into Sasquatch. I drew my zero cost cards. So I guess I still hold on to them. I can get a card into Morag. Vision can also move. There is Hit Monkey. So I think it's just get cards out of my hand. So this is the route we will go. Get as many cards out in advance of a Tillin. And Hit Monkey gets to seven. That's okay. A three seven is okay. So drawing into J. Oh man. I, I mean, I guess I get Sasquatch down. Sasquatch down left. Do I snap on this? They have a random hand. Four cards. I'm going to snap. Because I see my play line. It's Sasquatch into potentially Scar, into potentially Red Hulk. So they'll be able to play into Morag. But I'm kind of... Oh, wow. Okay. I hope you have Sean. <laughs> Because your Ronin just took, took a bite, too. So I think Jane is the best draw. Oh, Mjolnir. Okay, nothing to do. But the chances are so low that they have Dawn because of Attilan. So I think I stick this out because of those odds. And if they beat me, they beat me. Because playing against Arishem is playing the odds. And you will lose, but that's what odds are. You, it's not 100% guaranteed. Six hours later. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new uh, I'm not sure what's happening. So I, I edited it out. Okay, there we go. That was such a long pause. I edited it all out. <laughs> What a pause. So I still have priority and that Such is my what in the... I was going to like your video, but not anymore. What in the world? That was such a winnable game. All I did was have to play Jane and What happened? Oh man, what kind of bug was that? So I'm leaving this in here because this was a win. <laughs> this was definitely a win. It didn't let me play. Oh man, what a what a bug. So it didn't matter. I just play these two cards and I win, but you clearly saw the game did not let me play them. Uh, so I take a four cube loss instead of a four cube win. <laughs> This game sometimes. Oh, that's rough. But this does show uh, the the effectiveness of the deck against an Arishem player. This Doc Ock play was horrendous for them. Uh, but I'm counting this as a win. So, so if you want to fight me, fight me in the comments. But uh, this is definitely a win in my book. Okay, next up we have Killick. 
Space Throne regular deck. If they are junk, they might have us in Space Throne. Wrong guy, okay. Okay, they were afraid of us junking them. <laughs> but that's weird. Uh, am I playing strong guy out? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess I am playing strong guy out. Is there a way to move? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. They're not. They're not as crazy as I as I initially thought they were. Go lockjaw into wasp because next turn I can play. Thor potentially, but this is going to be weird. Let's see what I can yank out of my deck. I have a lot of my high cost cards. Okay. So I think I'm just playing Thor. Jane Foster Thor. But it's gotta be here. Because I don't want her blocking the middle lane. We still have Mockingbird in the deck. I have three zero-cost cards, though, so I'm only going to draw two of them. So I'm not quite sure what this... Uh, maybe I do throw Jane here to discount. And if she goes into my lockjaw lane, I'll just have to live with it. Okay, a hazmat. And a red guardian hits strong guy. That's actually fine. Oh, they're filled middle. Okay, I think I want you to go left, but you don't. Do they have Luke Cage? Well, that doesn't win middle. Get Yellow Jacket down. And then Molnir. Okay. With, with Red Hulk coming down, with me playing Jane, I was a little gun-shy on the snap because this is kind of an odd deck. Maybe this is a Ajax deck, but I don't know, because that's that hazmat is just throwing me all kinds of off. I was going to rethink this. I was going to play Yellow Jacket left just to make sure that I can get points there because that is the unanticipated play and play my big cost card right. I don't know how smart that would, that would be, but I think that's ultimately what I would have landed on or just straight out abandoning left, but that also doesn't sound smart. So that's why I think I would have pivoted and put Yellow Jacket there to just avoid a potential Shang-Chi. So I had some options and I was in a good position clearly because they retreated. Okay, next up we have Original. I assume this is an Arishem deck with Quinjet. Yes, it is. I don't think Quinjet really helps me. Maybe I wait a turn. I might be able to pair that with Hitmonkey later. Quinjet also discounts the Mockingbird by one. Well, that's a good reason to save it too into Vormir. I think that's what I do. Or do I exchange that? Maybe I exchange it because I can always play Yellow Jacket. And Quinjet discounts my Mockingbird by one. Oh, throwing away a werewolf. Mm. Okay. Because they're two, they're both two points, Quinjet and Yellow Jacket. Quantum Tunnel's fantastic for my deck, quite frankly. Uh, I'm snapping this. Get down, Thor. I don't know what I want to throw into Quantum Tunnel. The reason Quantum Tunnel's fantastic is because that's what I'm doing with Lockjaw anyway. Still a little light. So that's an advantage to my deck. The they get a Adam Warlock. Okay. And their hand is full. Fantastic. Let's see. I think I throw Wasp. And do I kill Yellow Jacket? Next turn, I can play Mockingbird into Scar. So Wasp, Yellow Jacket, Hit Monkey. See what Quantum Tunnel brings us. A fancy Sasquatch. Fantastic. And we have Scar down to four. I'd probably play Mockingbird middle 
and then see what I draw into because Scar could potentially win left if I can draw into Molnir, Wasp even, I think ties. So we'll just kind of see what we draw into. Maybe I roll the die with Quantum Tunnel and uh, throw Lockjaw into there and play Scar middle because remember, Scar is going to cost two. So that's potential. I don't know about them fishing for cards. We will see. Okay, they throw an Omega Red and get a Brood, so they are, they are locked there. So unless they have something that can buff, so I think we just do Scar and Lockjaw and call it a day. We'll see if they have Blue Marvel. Of course, that beats me. If they have Sean, they would still need to play something left. So a three cost card. We are at nineteen. So that's iffy if they have Sean and another card. But again, Arisham decks are so large, I can't play around them having the perfect counter. And the fact that they're taking this long means they're contemplating it. So let's see, let's see what they contemplated. What? Worthy? Victory. Uh, thank you for the free four cubes. <laughs> Uh, I'll take it. So they definitely should have retreated. And I only should have gotten two cubes, but I'll I'll take the additional two. Uh, the reason I'm leaving this in isn't because of this weird stay by my opponent, but also I hate when, when uh, content creators say that. People don't care. Like this person might not even care. They just want to see the game play out. See what I have, see what my deck is. They play it out to see what, what exactly am I doing with this hit monkey deck with Mockingbird and Sasquatch. Let me just see. I know I'm gonna lose, but let me just see. So that very well could have been the case. This does show how hard we can attack all three lanes. You see, we have a Sean target in, in one, two, three lanes. You can't Sean all three lanes. That's a callback to one of my older videos where I was playing a bunch of big power cards. Mockingbird now joins that group. And we because we apply so much pressure across all lanes, it's tough for our opponent, it can be tough for our opponent to match us in two of those three lanes. Okay, we have somebody who might have broken the character limit. <laughs> guac Guac 3000 Enjoyer. Strange Academy. They are running a normal size deck with Red Hulk. We unfortunately do not have our Red Hulk in hand. Altar of Death. Wait, do I still hold, or do I get down an early lockjaw? I think I get down an early lockjaw. I'm not snapping, because for all I know, this could be a destroy deck, but if they are, they're taking forever, so in all likelihood, they're not a destroy deck, because that's a pretty easy decision of what you're playing into there. Uh-oh. Right. Are we going up against the mirror? Did they steal my deck before I had a chance to make a video? Uh-oh. Well, Vision is a nice consolation prize. So I'll snap into that. We will play out Vision. Next turn, I may sacrifice the monkey. We shall see. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Hey, look, we drew into Red Hulk. So we will definitely throw away the monkey because I will play Red Hulk left. I should have moved vision. Okay, it didn't matter. We're still carrying it. Boy, that Red Hulk is large. Large and in charge. But they can't play him this turn. So let's cross our fingers and hope Red Hulk goes middle. Go middle. No whammies, no whammies. Oh, look at that. Okay, we don't have, we don't have Sean in this deck. But let's see where this Red Hulk goes. Oh, well, it was going right anyway. Red Hulk is at 22. I think I get down the Mockingbird. That gets my scar down to two. I assume I'm going to see Red Hulk this turn. So ideally, Red Hulk comes down left or right. Are ye 
ready. I mean, you have to draw that this turn. I mean, I definitely stay here, right? You have seven energy. If you Sean, I mean, do I play around Sean? This over here, if they Sean me middle, that gets to 10. So I would need to move vision. But then I can just load up on the other lanes. Decisions, decisions. I don't know. I ran it. Okay. They were trying to psych me out with the emote. Uh, I didn't I didn't fall for it again because you see we were able to spread out our power. They got a beta ray, which is a strong card. A 412 is a strong card. But again, because we can spread out our big power, it's just hard to compete across all three lanes. And we know they have a massive Red Hulk, but that massive Red Hulk only wins one lane. And because we're spreading out with all these big beef cakes and beef cakeettes, it's just hard to win all three lanes. And and funny, I know the video is being pitched as a Lockjaw hit monkey deck, <laughs> but funny enough, it's just turning into play massive cards and win deck. So we will look to get an actual Lockjaw and, and hit monkey gameplay. I, I swear during testing, I had them, but while recording, this is just turning into get massive cards out. And honestly, that's what Lockjaw is meant to do anyway. But the way Mockingbird and Sasquatch work, you can just cheat them out naturally as well. Scar gets discounted. The game plan works with or without Lockjaw, with or without Hit Monkey. Almost always a key when I'm building decks. Are there multiple ways to win? Yes? Okay, let's, let's investigate this and maybe I make a video out of it because now you can navigate games different ways. As long as you're decent at snapping and retreating and noticing, okay, I'm just overwhelming them with power. This lane will only have 11 power. This lane gets up to 18 and this lane has 24, maybe 27 if Red Hulk goes off. That's not a lot of power, honestly. I'm only getting over 20 in one lane, but still because we're spreading out that massive amount of power, it's just tough to compete. Okay, next up we have Alibus. Uh, we definitely get down our Mysterio because Miniaturized Lab is closing off. I probably play the real Mysterio in the Miniaturized Lab. Just get the four points there. They have a normal deck. We do have Lockjaw. So on turn five, if you play Mysterio, make sure to play the one of the clones into the Lockjaw lane. We won't do that, though, because we also have Wasp. So yes, Mysterio does kind of clog our lanes, but because we can spread out a lot of high power cards, we can overcome these zero power clones. They get down Psylocke, so this might be a turn three, a turn three Mr. Negative we're staring at. The hub gives us Captain Marvel. That's not bad. I think I get down Thor first I can always play him next turn I'll get down Mockingbird first oh no an early beta ray bill so this might be a lockjaw deck we're going up against that hasn't drawn into lockjaw okay now we definitely oh no 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 uh do I cycle that now Sure. This is this is why the deck's here, right? Let's let's cycle it in now. Yes, we are going up against somewhat of a mirror. I decided against Beta Ray. Where's my Spider-Man emote? I decided against Beta Ray Bill because it just didn't work out for the curve, which is why they are running Psylocke to make the curve work out better. I'm snapping this. So I'm gonna move Vision. What big cards do I have left in my deck? I have a Sasquatch. I have a... What am I doing last turn to? Uh, okay, monkey. Do your thing. Work your magic, monkey. Work your magic. Okay, Jane. That's okay. 
Alrighty, we get we get another crack at a large card. Taking aim. They will continue to fish. <laughs> and this is where we just spread out power. So we put Hulk here. Uh, do I play out Yellow Jacket now? I think I play out Yellow Jacket now. And then play a large Hulk here. Next turn, we have Monkey, Scar, Wasp. So this is, this is set up nicely. So we've kind of put left out of reach. They get, they're at four in hand and now they have five. So they definitely are playing beta. I think I, they would go heavy middle. They would play the Odin middle and the hammer. So the Odin middle gets them up to, uh, I don't know. What does that get them up to? <laughs> Maybe I do the monkey to guard against Sean, hammer and Sean. The hammer is only worth six. So maybe they throw the hammer in here. So maybe I just move the vision over here to cover that. I play... No, let's not overthink this. Just go with power. So hit monkey, scar, and wasp. And if they have Sean, they have Sean. But again, we're spreading out the power. So let's see. If this is Sean, they got us. Stormbreaker and Odin. Okay, yeah. that that never was going to going to win. Fantastic. So that was the first thing I called out. This is key to know what deck that your opponent is running and the likely cards in their deck. And we called it. I almost overthought it, <laughs> which is what you witnessed. But we did not overthink it. We played this smartly. If I had moved the vision. I would have been, oh, it didn't even matter. I could have moved the vision. I would have been down eight points. I would have had 21 middle. That still would have won. So, so yeah, we were just covered. And hey, look at that. I, I called it. We, we played Lockjaw. We even got to cycle Hit Monkey into the Lockjaw. Lockjaw gave us vision. Fantastic for a wasp. So essentially a zero cost vision. It doesn't get much better than that. We're challenging again with a strong power across at least two of the lanes 14 is enough you have to respect it and we got to play lockjaw we got to play hit monkey i didn't get to show the super backup plan of a larger hit monkey but during testing i did get hit monkey to 10 what is it plus two so i must have gotten them to 11 or maybe one of the locations boosted them so i was able to get a two cost or three scar of that game but that is a super backup plan, Hip Monkey, and why he's in the deck. You're really relying on Lockjaw to get out your big power cards. Get your big power cards down into separate lanes and make it tough for your opponent to win two of them. They can win one, but it is tough with this deck for them to win two. So rather than a normal wrap-up breakdown, I will talk about how I built this deck. So with the recent, as of this, me recording this, Lockjaw was recently buffed along with Hitmonkey. I was really thinking about Lockjaw. How can I build a Lockjaw deck? And if you're familiar with the channel, I do not like building meta decks. So of course there's some overlap. There's only gonna be, there's only 12 cards in the deck. So every card can't be unique, but I didn't want to build the meta version of the Lockjaw, Jane, Thor, Hammers so, deck. But that is strong. That's a strong combination. I can't deny that. I started with Lockjaw, of course. Then you go to your zero cost cards. Why wouldn't you? It's Lockjaw. You can throw as many cards into Lockjaw as possible now on a single turn. So you have to have Wasp and Yellow Jacket, even though Yellow Jacket hits cards by negative one. The point with Yellow Jacket, you can actually duck Shang-Chi on Mockingbird, potentially Red Hulk, and Sasquatch if you play Yellow Jacket after you play those 10 power cards. It'll knock it down to 9 if you're expecting a Sean, and then the Sean will just whiff. Jane has to be included because she fishes zero cost cards out of your deck, and that's just too strong. Because if you haven't drawn them on turn 5, you play Jane. You have Lockjaw down on turn 6. You can cycle two cards in. Fantastic. Then you go to Thor, because of course he has a zero cost card in Molnir. 
the reason I didn't include Beta Ray, even though I wanted to, I just recently unlocked them for the first time. I still haven't used them in a deck. Lockjaw at four, Beta Ray Bill at four, just conflict. And I didn't want to add any energy sheet in this version of the deck. Then I went to, okay, Lockjaw, I have to cheat out cards. What do I want to cheat out? Big power, duh. Duh. So that is Red Hulk is big power. Scar, because he can get discounted with big power on the board. So that's kind of a no brainer. Then you have Sasquatch and Mockingbird, which is more big power, but also they can be discounted on their own. So there's kind of a backup to the backup plan to the backup plan in this deck, which I just love. Because if you don't draw Lockjaw, you can get Mysterio down. And now I don't need Lockjaw to cheat out my Sasquatch and Mockingbird. They're cheating themselves out. Oh, I didn't draw Mysterio, but I drew Lockjaw and I drew Wasp and Yellow Jacket. I still have big cards in the deck. Let's cheat him out that way. That's why I love that flexibility. Hit Monkey, to be honest, he's probably replaceable in this deck, but also I can reliably get him to like a 3-7. And 3-7 isn't a bad card. I mean, you have Gladiator at 3-8 and that's the highest power three card. I'm satisfied with that. And you can also push him higher in certain situations and he provides a super alternate win condition. This deck kind of reminds me of my Phoenix Force deck where there's so many weird winning lines the longer you play with the deck you will just do absolute weird things that you will be shocked by the opponent will definitely be shocked by and it'll just win you games now that's not your main path you have to have a cooperative opponent who is not drawing well it's still possible i definitely won those types of games during testing with hit monkey which was weird to say in this deck but also i do think he's replaceable and then your big cost cards Honestly, I think all of them are somewhat replaceable. Of course, your other big cost cards can't cheat themselves out, like Mockingbird and Sasquatch, but they're still big power cards. Things like Magneto, maybe a Giganto, a regular Hulk even would work. Just anything big, not Destroyer, but, but anything big should fit the bill in this deck. Vision is fantastic because now that gives me an extra cycle on Lockjaw. That's why he's in there. That's how I came about creating this deck. You should always feel free to make your own substitutions. I love hearing when people make their own substitutions and how that worked for you. And maybe you improve this deck. I quite frankly don't have as much of a time now that I'm kind of churning through decks to really refine these decks that I put out. Now, I believe all of them are good. I also believe that there are probably improvements that can be made. Don't just take these decks and go, okay, this is fantastic and this is final. If you're having an issue, maybe you throw in instead of Hitmonkey, a Shang-Chi. You're probably a little worse into Loki at that point if you're facing a lot of Loki, but maybe that works out for you, the Sean, because you can pair that with a two cost Scar maybe at the end of the game that's super powerful. And honestly, maybe it's a substitution I would make if I were gonna use this deck more, but uh, it's, it's on the grind and trying to find another new deck. But this one I do think is strong, as you got to see. So give it a shot and let me know what you think. And now a bonus clip. Okay, next up we have Joker Heckler. Project Pegasus, we definitely get out the Red Hulk. They are a regular deck. I'm gonna snap into this. Play down Red Hulk into the unknown location. It's a strong play. They can't Shang-Chi me in every single lane. And the fact that I can get Red Hulk down early, now I know my Scar is going to be four. I can play him to a different lane. I'm in a very good position. Ideally, I can draw into Mysterio. Hmm. Victory. Free Q. <laughs> now, your mileage may vary on this snap because I'm going up against a top 5,000 player. They typically are more cautious so i can get away with some aggressive snapping so if you're at a lower rank you may not be able to get away with it but also even if you don't get away with the free cube that i just got you're in a strong position i am in a strong position with the cards i have in my hand i have right now a decent size hit monkey i'm going to draw into more of my lower cost cards i'm getting a higher cost card out of my hand immediately star is going down to four Sure, I don't know these two locations. That could have messed me up, of course. I, I always play the odds, and the odds are in your favor. Like, I, I forget, I read on Reddit somewhere, it might be 75%. It's fine to play in the unrevealed locations. 25% of the time, you'll be horribly disadvantaged because of it. I play to the 75%, and the 75% of the time, I'm fine. 
and the 25 percent of the time i'm not and i retreat that's that's just how i treat unknown locations and why i snapped in this game and it worked out and i got a free cube out of it no 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 wait 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 wait